Thank you for joining us uh, today on our Lincoln Financial Media Group station. The topic of today's program is military veterans in America. Some of the challenges they face after military service, the ailments that plague them throughout their lives, and an organization that has helped them through the years when they are homeless, not only here in South Florida, but around the country, and that's Veterans Support Organization. Its founder, Richard Van Houten, is here, president also. Richard, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Thank for great being to be- Thank you for being here. Yes. Uh, and your wife, Michelle, is here. Michelle is director of the New Life Haven, which is associated with also. Michelle, hi. Hello. How are you, Ron? And also Sarah Keeley is here, who's a chapter manager locally here in Fort Lauderdale, right? Correct. Hi, Ron. Now, Michelle was in the military. We're going to talk about your service and how you ended up working with these fine folks. Richard, where did you start this organization and why? I mean, what was it, what brought you to the point where you said, I got to do something about this if nobody else does? I'm an actually an eight-year veteran. I got out in uh, just early 91. And, uh, what, what branch? Uh, U.S. Army. Okay. And uh, I got out and uh, I worked for a sales company. I got injured with them and I laid around on workers' comp for about, I don't know, about three, four years. And mm. I uh, started raising money and helping as a volunteer with another group, a big group out there. And I uh, just saw different needs. I, I saw another direction. You know, a food bank at the time is what we started with in Rhode Island was needed. I was going to say, where was this? Yes, Rhode Island. Um, and um, it was about 11 years. We started in 1999, actually. Yeah. We opened up a small food bank and then... Uh, from there, uh, we started helping veterans with grants. And the key thing was, is I found out veterans, when they were coming back to uh, to us for another grant, we were just putting a Band-Aid on it by just giving them money. So the old saying goes, um, rather than give them a fish, feed them for a day, teach them how to fish and feed them for life. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what we do. You know, we, we show them a skill. Uh, the key thing about a veteran is getting them out, out uh, in society, dealing with the public. Uh, when they get back, uh, you know, they, 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 be, they get that worth, worth, worthiness, uh, mm-hmm. they need that worthiness back and they need to feel like they're needed. Yeah. So you get them out there, you get them in front of people to talk and mingle and, um, it kind of helps them. It makes them feel really good about themselves. And what's really nice is on the work program, while they're raising money, not only is the donation helping that veteran that is raising it, but the other part of it goes to help other veterans. So they're not only helping themselves, but they're helping other veterans while they're doing it. Yeah, and, I, beca- and I became aware of your organization um, at the Publix in Cooper City. Uh, I had stopped, I think, on a Sunday afternoon, and one of your guys was there, um, you know, raising money, and it said Veterans Support Group, and we were talking for a few minutes about that. Um, I do want to tell you, uh, Publix, Walmarts uh, all over the country, mm-hmm. uh, and Publix where they're located, and that's Florida and Georgia, and uh, is great to us. If it wasn't for them, yeah. uh, we wouldn't be able to do half of what we do. There's an awful lot of groups that do an awful lot of good work, but I would imagine all of them really want to be in a position like that in front of a public store, especially in, when you're talking about supermarkets in South Florida, in front of a public store. How do you approach a company like that, like Publix, and say, this is our group, we really would like to be out in front of your store on a certain occasion? It's just like the magazine that we hand out. Not all groups do that. I'm very big with literature. Mm-hmm. Uh, the key is education. Yeah. If you educate everybody about the, you know, what you do, um, they like it and they support it. And I'll tell you again, Publix Walmarts are great to us. They see what we do. Um, the uh, the community relations person of Publix located here in Southern Florida actually has visited our New Life Haven located over here in Broward. Mm-hmm. And she was very impressed. I mean, we met with her, we spoke with them, and we showed them what we do. Yeah. And, and uh, they support it. You know, they like what we do. And, um, Talk about the percentage of, of uh, not not just men, but men and women who are homeless in America who are veterans. Yes, Right now in Florida, there's about 19,000 homeless veterans, and just in southern Florida, there's about 8,000. And your brochure um, said 33%, almost a third, a third. Mm-hmm. In, in the country. Yes, I'll, and I will let Michelle, she speaks a lot with uh, the New Life Haven and with the VAs, and I'll let her speak a little bit about the homelessness. Yeah, Michelle, wh- why are so many veterans homeless? A lot of them, I believe, are homeless because they they are they haven't gotten the correct treatment that they need mm-hmm. some of them i mean they need to go to the va they need to get medical treatment many of them have you know 
mental issues, which lead them into substance abuse issues, which takes away their money, which gets them thrown out of their house, which it's just a vicious cycle. cycle. Yeah. And, you know, so what we do with the, you know, who we have at New Life, they're all referred to the VA. They go there for all their services. You know, they come in off the street. Once they're cleaned up and they, you know, they're feeling better about themselves, then, you know, it just, that builds their self-esteem alone. They're clean. They're clothed. They have a bed to sleep in. You know, they've got, we help them to get their, you know, food stamps. We help them work, you know, with other agencies that do employment. We, you know, we'll set them up with, you know, with those agencies to help Mm -hmm. out so they get, you know, back on track. Not Some of them come through our work program, you know, just for putting money in their pocket for now to get them back on their feet so they can build themselves up again. And then, you know, then we transition them into, you know, going out looking for jobs with other we work with volunteers of america workforce one and you know they're they work strictly with they've got grants and they work strictly with employee it's the homeless veteran reintegration project Mm -hmm. is the name of a grant that's out there that employers can get and they employ veterans you know and then they get a you know they get the grant money the veterans get a job you know but as that's what I believe is the biggest reason for the homelessness is there you know a lot of them a lot of mental health issues we have is uh, ma- yeah. mostly we, it. the problem we found too with the VAs are doing a great job out there uh, some of these veterans are not really educated with what's offered to them mm-hmm. uh, like for instance in New Life Haven Michelle as the director of we've gotten veterans in there uh, four or five months ago that were homeless living under a bridge now have their own apartment mm-hmm. due to what is offered to them out there uh, that get benefits from the from the military mm-hmm. for their service and had no idea this was offered to them it's yeah. it's really um, you know the benefits amazing. is for the disability yes the disability Not- right yeah. And, and they knew they didn't know that this was offered. Now they don't have to work because they were injured, or you know uh, they got benefits whether it's Social Security or from the VA, and uh, they get a discount on their apartment because the, what's offered. Well, out there, yeah, the HUD bash the voucher. HUD bash. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable, and it's just educating them. And like Michelle said, I have Sarah Keeley here. She started as a veteran struggling and came in to our work program, and I'd like for her to maybe say oh, yeah. because then you'll hear from the horse's mouth, yeah. right, to how we changed a veteran's life, and we do have her with us here. Yeah. Sarah, what what branch of the service? I was 11 years Army, right, four years, years active. Army. And how did you come to, the, to join this group? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of history first. I mean, I served in Desert Storm. Mm-hmm. I have uh, a degree in electronics. I also work quality control, and I was laid off because they couldn't afford me. Yeah. I was laid off for a year. I was down to my last week of unemployment check and I happened to be driving down University Drive and I saw veteran support on the outside of the building. We since moved but I went in there and I talked to Justin Wells and he ended up giving me a job. He told me, you know, basically what they do, stand in front of a store and ask the customers, you know, if they'd like to help out with the veteran. Mm -hmm. I started like two days later and I mean I was on the verge, I had a foreclosure notice on my house. I had my tr- my car was ready to get repossessed. I couldn't pay my bills. I was like paying one bill one month and mm-hmm. then, you know, I mean, unemployment doesn't go very far. And that was a year ago in February. Mm-hmm. And since then, I've been able to pay up all my bills. All my bills are current now. I mean, just working with these guys, it built up my self-esteem so much, you know, and Referring back to the mental issues that Michelle talked about, I also suffer from PTSD, you know, and that gives somebody depression. And then when you're unemployed, that makes it worse. And I ended up getting treatment at the VA. But if I didn't have that treatment because of seeing my fellow veterans and putting on the uniform and going out there, I probably would have never gone to the VA and gotten treatment. I yeah. mean, the, the veteran support has helped me so much. Ex- I can't even begin to tell you. You, you, Richard, really stressed in, in this brochure, and again, you mentioned, and Michelle just mentioned, getting people cleaned up, getting them to look respectable. How important is that? Oh, it's huge. The, the, the self-esteem. I mean, I, I, I was living in a house, I, you know, and the self-esteem just mentally mm-hmm. is huge. You feel like you belong. You feel like you have a purpose. And on top of that, you're helping yourself and you're helping other veterans. You know, it's like 
this the the worthiness and the self esteem and and it's overwhelming sometimes. I, I am absolutely so grateful. Now, what do you do with a veteran support group? Right now, um, I just got uh, promoted to chapter manager, mm-hmm. and um, I have a uh, two of us run the chapter together and. You know, I we book the stores, we talk to managers, um, we ed- we try and educate all the veterans that we see. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's a huge wide uh, um, wide range of variety that we do. Um, also, we're able to give out grants. There's nothing there's nothing like a feeling of helping out a veteran. You know, I mean, the first time I I was able to hand a veteran a check, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing feeling. Yeah, when you have when somebody does come to you, do they do they come to you first, or is there one person, one individual with the organization who handles basically incoming uh, veterans that really need help, no matter how they get there? Is there do they sit down with one person and they kind of evaluate them? Yes, it's really the chapter manager. Uh, I get as the president get calls because my number is in the literature that is circulated mm-hmm. around the nation, and I usually direct it to the chapter manager. So that's, um, that's and that would be in yes, Sarah. in Southern Florida, but yeah. we have we're in again in twelve nineteen states. We have offices in twelve states right yeah. now and growing. Yeah, uh, that's all ultimate goal is to serve veterans and help veterans across the nation one day in every state um but yeah and then the managers sit down with them and they ask uh you know uh, are they enrolled in the va because that's one of our biggest things that we want to get everybody that comes to us enrolled in the va if they're not the vas are doing wonderful things yeah. sarah how many how many of the veterans come to you that that you talk to initially have no idea what services are out there available to them and oh. and, and why don't they know that I would say one out of every two veterans that I've talked to Half. don't even, yeah, I mean, don't even know that they can go to the VA. You know, I talk to them and I say, okay, did you serve? When did you serve? And I say, you may be eligible. You need to go to the VA, yeah. whether it be the Miami, the West Palm Beach, or the Broward Outpatient Clinic. Do a lot of them? Do a lot of them think negatively of the VA hospitals to the point where oh, I'm not going down there? Some of them do. Some of them do. Yeah. But. I think it's a lack of education, you know? I mean, the the, the VAs have done nothing but help me, you I, know? Yeah. The um, I think one thing, and the VA is working with the Department of Defense to try to fix this, but when the veterans, when they're active duty and they're getting out, when they're, do, when they're you know, doing all their paperwork and processing to get out, they're actually they're given information about you know the VAs and what to do, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you're in that when you're that person, you're just thinking oh yeah whatever yeah talk to me tell me whatever and I I just want to go home yeah, I just want to yeah. get out of here I'm and they Not they half attention. hear they half hear what was said and then once they get out then they don't ever look back and think of the VA they just think they've got to go do it all on their own. And, you know, so some of them think they have to have been in combat. Some think they had to have served, you know, overseas. Some Mm -hmm. think that they just they got all these ideas that they think is why they can't get services at the VA when a lot of times they're wrong. Yeah. Richard, when you started this whole thing, uh, you started a food bank. Is that it? And then you started trying to uh, place veterans in jobs. And as I, I read, you realized that just helping them with food or finances or trying to find them work, that just wasn't enough. No, no, no. And, and, and it was putting a Band-Aid on. You know, a veteran comes to you, there's a reason why they're struggling. You know, and, and if it is drug and alcohol and we find out, we try and place them somewhere to help them. But uh, when they come to you and say, I need 500 to catch my rent up, why? Yeah. You know, and that's the key. And usually it's lack, not enough work, not working. And that's when I came down to realize after they tried coming to me three or four times that, hey, a Band-Aid is not enough. Mm-hmm. And this is what we have. We have a work program. Uh, and, and, you know, and Sarah mentioned post-traumatic stress. What's big about that, and I'll give you a prime example. Uh, I used to run the Southern Chapter. I was not only the founder. Um, one day, so on a Saturday, about two years ago, I pulled in the driveway of my house. I had just gotten the guys out Saturday morning on the work program in the vans to go to the mm-hmm. stores. I get a call from a father of a veteran, just got out 
four months prior. And he said, my son is self-destructing. I'm getting ready to throw him out. Uh, please help me. I've seen you guys in front of stores. Please help. And I said, please, put, is he there? And he said, yes. I said, put him on the phone. And I said to this guy, I said, uh, have you ever been homeless? He said, no. I says, well, you know, uh, it's you don't know what you're, you know, you're getting yourself into. I says, well, why is this happening? He says, well, I get back from the military. I was respected there. I was in charge of people. I get uh, back and I'm delivering pizza. I feel worthless. Yeah. So if it, post-traumatic stress he had just got worse, and he tried smothering it with liquor, going out with his friends. So I asked him, I says, how about if you came to me, you know, I put you on the work program and it give you time to look for other work. And not only will you be helping yourself, but helping other veterans. Mm -hmm. And he came to us, worked with us for about a year, and he's in college now. The last I heard of him, he's got his own vehicle. Mm -hmm. He's doing great. And his that's the key. Post-traumatic stress yeah. just gets built up with the worthiness, <laughs> the, with the feeling <clears throat> worthless. Right. It just gets worse, and they try smothering it. And that's what we do. We get them, we get them to feel that worth worthy feeling not and what's great about it is not only are they helping themselves but helping other veterans and that's the key it's no big science you know that yeah, what i do yeah. it's 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 uh it's pretty basic stuff yeah, yeah and we we go to the va's the biggest thing i like doing and we do help other groups as well uh, all the big groups we do work with them we donate money to them uh we donate money to parades grants to veterans but uh, we give money to the volunteer services in the va hospitals and yeah. we sponsor some a lot of different things across the country and i love the va's the va's is it's doing great things it's, yeah. and that's the key like they mentioned earlier michelle and, and sarah that it's lack of education yeah. when they come to us they don't know and then when they start using the vas when they start saying you know they really helped us and, and that's what's really yeah. nice it's education you know it's just educating people sarah when when i uh, encountered the gentleman uh from a support uh, organization out front of the uh, from the of the public store, and I was chatting with him for a few minutes, and then I went in the store. When I came out, there were two or three people talking with him. Is it therapeutic for the men and women who are going out and doing this, um, who are working? And is it therapeutic just to be able to talk to people and and have people actually oh, yeah. just converse with them? Yeah, I mean, one of the symptoms, you know, and there are many symptoms of yeah, PTSD, yeah. but one of the symptoms is you want to. You know, you don't want to outreach to anybody. Yeah, you yeah. want to just sit in the house by yourself. by yourself. And for the guys, for anybody to stand in front of a store, you know, and talk to these guys. I mean, to me, it was so hard when I started. It was so, but you, you know, you, you need to make the money. Mm -hmm. You know, you you gotta you gotta, and you build up your self esteem and you build up your confidence and you start talking to people and that helps them pull themselves out of the shell. This is this is just not raising money for the organization. This is a job for them. Yeah, it's it's skills because there's a lot of fundraising and, and any job. If you think about it, Ron, you got to have people skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything, anything you do, work at a store, salesman, radio personality. If you're shy or you, the post traumatic stress is making you clam up, mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. going to be outgoing. So it's it's getting them out there and getting them to to talk to people and you know and with the help that we have and and they, they talk and they find out like the VA and it's just a process it's yeah. a step. One it's of the, one of the things I wanted to talk about with, with Sarah for just a second. Um, a lot of times we think veterans who are struggling, who are homeless, um, just are unskilled. And and but you are not you're an example of somebody who is skilled um but there are so many who were infantry who you know they went in when they were 18 years old and they got out maybe when they were 22 or 25 or 28 and really never learned a skill so how do you transition them into um learning a skill well i tell you what work even if they were in the infantry yeah. which is huge they learned skills they learned leadership there you go they learned how to break down weapons they learned all kinds of things. Teamwork. Teamwork, yes. They learn all kinds of mm -hmm. skills. And if you go, there's a website um, connected to the VA um, Veterans Administration. They can actually go, I can't remember where it is, but there's a website that's attached to the VA website. And mm -hmm. they can actually put in their military skills and it'll oh, yeah, tell it'll them, them what, jobs they what civilian jobs they're, <laughs> they're, um, qualified they qualified they're qualified for, yes. Education. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that's all. that's the main thing. This new life haven, 
now this is residents also, right? It's all residents. It's a sober living male facility. Male and female veterans. Male and females. Um, how, how many people are there on a, on a daily basis? It's about 115 oh, beds. Oh my goodness. Um, they're not all full. Yeah. So if you know if there are any you know homeless veterans or if anybody listening knows of any homeless veterans that could use you know a, a sober clean place to live, mm-hmm. it's furnished, cable TV, AC. I mean, it's everything's there. We have a social worker on staff Monday to Friday, and we have a resident manager that lives there. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very well maintained. We provide bus passes for the guys to go to appointments, to go to jobs if they need to go, a bus pass to go to work. Um, and we'll you know we'll move them if they're in you know another part of the country or you know outside of the immediate area mm-hmm. and they need transportation we'll get the you know provide them the transportation to come down. The only requirements are stay clean and sober. Um, you know obviously there's and that's got to be now, now that's tough in itself. I mean that is tough in itself. It is and there's people that you know for the most part you know we get people that come in and. <clears throat> Excuse me. They they do very well. They they're ready to be clean and sober. Mm-hmm. They finally reached the point where they said, you know what, this is enough. I'm ready to clean up. Of course, they relapse, and you know there are consequences for it. But you know it's part of recovery. And you know we really do um we really do a lot of uh, you know working with them. Megan is our case ma- our social worker, and mm-hmm. she works. She meets with every one of them. She does you know. An ev- not a, an evaluation, just kind of feeling them out, where right, they're right, at, what right. their what their goals are, where they want to go, what they want to do, and you know the ones that really want help. You know, and you get a variety of people. There's some they just want the place to sleep and don't bother me, and I'm not going to get any services. And you know, and if they want the help, it's there for them. I mean, we don't force anything on anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if they if they want the help, it's there. And we've had a lot of success stories. Last year, over 200 people went through 200 veterans went through it new life transitioned mm-hmm. into life right. into workforce yes. into a neighborhood yep. like over 600 went through our work program across the nation yeah mm-hmm. and I, I did want to mention you mentioned something about uh, veterans with skills mm-hmm. uh, two years ago I had a police chief sleeping in his car veteran in the back seat of his car in in parking lots of grocery stores and mm. stores. He came from Naples. He yeah, yeah I Fort can't Myers mention area. names, but yeah. uh, we helped him, and uh, he calls me a lot. We talk, and that's the key. We have veterans, again, at New Life that come by just to visit, and it's really, mm-hmm. really unbelievable. There is one topic I would like to mention sure. that people forget. Uh, don't forget, but it's not a topic that, that suicides. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about people, uh, veterans dying in war and getting, you know, getting wounded. Uh, we did something last year. We put 6,256 flags in the beach, in Fort Lauderdale here, uh, for Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. Uh, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. I'm Memorial sorry. Day. Each flag, remember, 6,256 flags, singly put in. Mm-hmm. Each flag represented a suicide. Veteran suicide. That came back from the war and committed wow. suicide after they got back. Wow. And we were telling people as they were going by why the flags were in the beach, and they were like amazed. Mm-hmm. They said they had no idea that that many veterans have in one year. In it's one year? One year. Mm-hmm. Yes. One year. Nationwide one year. in one year. Yeah, one year. and I think it was a few thousand. There's more than uh, were killed in the war. <laughs> yes, it was more that have, you know, it was just amazing. It was like, yeah. I think it was very, was very, very high. I think uh, minor. What? How, how many have died in war? Yeah, I don't know. I can't uh, remember the whole number. Three thousand. Yeah, far too many. Yeah, yeah it's right. definitely yeah. far but too many. But more committed suicide many. than died in well, war. Well, this whole that's, thing. That's yeah. why we do what we do because six thousand. Um, it's unreal. Yeah. I mean, and those are post-traumatic stress, sitting in houses, drinking themselves to death, and that's we're just trying, uh, and we can't do it alone. Yeah. We can't do it alone. This whole thing just, about post-traumatic express, this is, I mean, uh, 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 distress. This is really something that really just came out. Uh, we were aware of, or made aware of, uh, after the Gulf War. Well, I, I mean, I, Vietnam War. When when guys came back from Vietnam War and struggled for years, they say, well, you know, the, it's just results of of right. war. It, it, it's changed names. It's, it's changed it, names. It, it's shell shock. Yeah, right. shell yeah. shock. Right. So it's it's. But just, we're more aware of, yeah, of the circumstances. Much more aware. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And mm. it's I mean and it, the severity of it. I yes. Mean, it used to just be oh yeah you know like you said it's shell shock it's this it's you know you'll be okay just go home go to sleep. Time you know, well, you know, you know time heal, yeah. will heal. Yeah. Time but, time makes it worse. But now there's a lot of Vietnam veterans now 
there's a lot of veterans from all eras that oh, are right. getting yeah. getting treatment for PTSD yeah. 30 years later, but hey, better late than never, I guess. Richard, talk about the work program and how you transition them into a training program and getting them someplace where they can learn a, a skill where they can go out and work what, in society. What they do is when we, we they come on the work program, uh, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, mm-hmm. and I originally did that to give them the best part of the week to go out and look for other work. Mm, okay. uh, you know, uh, and that's that's the thing, you know. They, 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 the key is getting them out of the shell, getting them mingling. They meet people out in the field, just like they met you. That say, hey, you know, yeah. what did you do? Uh, I got a business. I can, you know, I would like to employ you because a lot of businesses out there are doing great things and wanting to hire veterans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're appreciating the veteran now and just getting them out in front of stores and and you know with people. That's how a lot of them get their jobs. You know, they yeah. talk to people in front of stores. You know, they talk about what they've done and, you, you know, their skills and yeah. or no skills. And the business owner hires them. Yeah. How do you and, guide them to, like, to real training, like vocational training or, or uh, t- uh, training in a trade? That's where we, I mean, that's where we work with Workforce One and, you know, okay. the right. agencies like that that have, you know, they work with the employers you know, so we can we'll refer them to those agencies okay. that will right. you know have the connections to the employers. We don't actually do that employment training and right, that right, stuff, right. We, but we work closely with other agencies that do it. But the skills that we give them, you know, that they learn on the work program mm-hmm. are basically universal. Yeah, they can go mow grass. They can you know work anywhere they want to work. A hospital. I mean, just with Depending people on- skills, you got to have you got to be able to you know deal with people and talk and be outgoing. People skills and learn. social skills, and then they can work they themselves can, into right. into an actual and, occupation. And you actually look on Craigslist for fundraising jobs, a lot and of you'd be surprised. I mean, there are companies out there that are looking for people mm-hmm. to fundraise, mm-hmm. whether it be over the uh, phone, whether it be door to door, that are paying unbelievable amounts. Yeah. You know that and. and it's needed. It's a needed. You know, the key is getting out there and getting them to mingle. Like like Sarah mentioned, you know, it used to be shell shock. Now, yeah, post, yeah. it's them sitting in a house, which is the worst. It's the worst. And we're just trying to get them out and get them, you know, yeah. involved. we got about three minutes. Um, one of the new um, groups of homeless and groups of homeless veterans are... Single parents, single Mm -hmm. mothers with children who were in the service, who are no longer in the service. Now they've got these kids, and they're finding themselves in in a tough situation. Have you dealt with those? That's our that's our that's our next mission is to find to get get a place where we can house homeless women and children, and eventually home you know families, wife, you know husband and children. The military, Sarah, the military does offer uh, uh, a good life for a lot of people that do stay in, but those that transition out sometimes find that uh, on the outside uh, it's, it, it's it's really tough. It is tough, yeah. I mean, like um, somebody mentioned, um, yeah, I mean, you have a sense of pride in the uniform. Mm-hmm. You know, you wear it and you're in the military. You know, I was stationed overseas for four years. I wore the, the uniform, you know, everywhere I went mm-hmm. except when I went to bed, basically. Yeah. And there's a huge sense of pride in that uniform. You're you are defending this country, you know, and you get out and all of a sudden you don't have that uniform on. You know? Yeah, you've gotta find another way to have that self esteem. I can relate to that. My father <laughs> my father in law uh was Marine, Second World War, got out, went back in two years later. Stayed in for 26 years. He was wow. a, he was a three war uh, master gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps. Wow. wow. So, wow. but went back into the service because uh, he just felt that the service offered him more than on the outside. But a lot of people, when they do get on the outside, they have a lot of difficulties, mm-hmm. don't they? And these veterans mm-hmm. right now are just happy to find work. Yeah. It's yeah. just just to find with this economy. Yeah. It's just finding. Work. Well, and your organization is is one of them nationwide that helps them, and but in a bigger way all the time. Yes. Um, if somebody wanted to contact you, if what's the telephone uh, number? Uh, Who do they call? Uh, they call locally. Yeah. 954-537-3001. And you got somebody sitting... Website. Yeah, website. www.theveteranssupport.com. Uh, Org. Yeah, so we got a veteran listening to this program either early in the morning or late at night, yeah, uh, and um, if they want to get into new life, they're thinking to themselves, life. you know, maybe I should contact him. 
Yes, and that's across mm-hmm. the nation. We will transport them uh, to New Life Haven located here in Florida. We will pay for transportation. And yeah. for uh, the work program, we have yes. chapters, you know, we cut, we're registered in 19 states. We serve veterans in 19 states. We have offices in 12 states. Give us a, give us, give us a list. There's the list of states. No, no, no. Give oh. us a local telephone number Nine, and then we'll wrap. 954-537-3001. So when you see these gentlemen or this lady standing out front of a Publix or a Walmart in South Florida with one of these brochures that says veterans that you can read on the top, stop and chat with them. Uh, it'll, it'll be worth your while. Thanks to all of you for being with us today. Thank, Thank you, you very you, much, Ron. Ron.